Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Be sure to like and subscribe this video for more content on any of your alternative football favorites. Now, on to the show. <laughs> Joining me today on the Gridiron Gallery podcast, I have the pleasure of being joined by a current player for the European League of Football, one that is part of the Leipzig Kings, defensive back Daniel DeCall, who also played for the Spring League. He was with the Generals last fall during the inaugural televised season of the Spring League. Daniel, good to have you on the show. Thank you for reaching out and wanting to talk with myself. We'll be joined by Vince, by the way, from All Football Scouting Report later in this interview. But to kick things off, I just want to get into your career career and stuff too but uh before I even do that how, how are things in Leipzig you know how are you adjusting you know the season's coming up here pretty quick for you yeah um it's um it's sort of a little bit uh, unexpected I feel like for everybody because it's a new league it's a new city for us I think uh I'm not sure but I think this is the first time that we have like a decently high level football in Leipzig so I don't think they have ever had like GFL 2 or GFL 1 here so it's a lot of new stuff for everybody so but yeah we're all we're still like adapting to it and we're pretty excited here you can feel the excitement here in Leipzig awesome yeah that's fantastic I mean things are definitely seem like they're coming along we get the social updates from Leipzig or at least yeah. the Kings account every day here on Twitter and other social platforms and you know before we really get into that and where you're at right now I always ask every player where they came from you know, how it all began how the passion for the sport started so you know, this is your time here. How did how did it all uh, how did it all begin? I understand you're from Spain, so you might be a little bit a uh, different route than say a typical American player. Which you know, for football in the U.S., the American version, it's it's pretty easy to jump into. So, where did things begin for you? Yeah, so when I was uh, 17, I got like a little scholarship from the government to go study English abroad. So I went to New York for like about two months, a little more. And I was staying with the family and their nephew was playing college football in New Jersey. So one weekend we went to watch his game. And I remember that I was like, I was shocked because I've never seen a sport like that. You know, in Spain, we only have like soccer and basketball and that's pretty much it. So I liked it a lot. And when I was back, I started like looking it up and I found out that we had like uh, three decently big teams in Spain. We had a national league. So, so I started playing and I've been playing ever since. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Cause I mean, for you, you were, you played at least, you started in the L LFNA. Uh, yes. You were with the uh, Rivas Osos. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Osos is my home team. It's why, not really where I started, but it's almost where I started. So it's where, where I started taking it seriously. You know what I mean? And truly like developing as an athlete, as a football player. So uh, I consider it my kind of my alma mater, you know, okay. in a way. You know what I mean? So it's kind of, it's my home team, it's my family. And yeah. Right, yeah, you connect right back to it. So yeah, you exactly. Go and go play for for a spot that you're already yeah. familiar with. You know. Yeah, and every time I'm back home, I, I try to be with them. Uh, I try to play if I if I have the chance. If not, I try to be around, coach the new guys or whatever I can do to help them. Oh, nice. So you do a little bit of coaching too when you get the chance. Yeah, every time. Yeah, I also when I was in Swiss Hall, I used to, I was really involved with coaching the youth teams, uh, U16, U19. Uh, and you, uh, I used to like it a lot, but just ever since, like, I haven't really had the chance to, like, focus on it that much. Okay. So uh, m most of your time, actually, it's interesting. I know you start out in, the, in your country of origin. Yeah. However, your most of your playing experience is based in the GFL, which yeah. is a current, uh, at least a current uh, season's going on for them. And, you know, many of the discussion, at least the European League of Football deals with the GFL with turns their territory. But for you, you you're on you're on uh, at least one of the more successful teams as of late with the uh, Schwabish Hall Unicorns. Am I correct? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, that's my first experience outside of Spain. Uh, uh, when I, I I graduated from college in 2016, uh, I wanted to do something new. I wanted to try to go to a place where they had like high level football. So I tried to go play college in the states. Obviously, it didn't work out because back then I didn't have the I just wasn't good enough yet, you know what I mean? And I looked at, at everything. I looked at Mexico, I looked at Japan, I looked at everything, and I ended up uh, thinking that it would be just easier to stay in Europe and I could just go to the best level in Europe, so that was Germany. So I started, like, looking up uh, stuff about the league, reaching out to a few coaches, and back then I wasn't really an experienced player and I didn't have good tape or anything, so uh, Swabish Hall was uh, the 
pretty much the only place that wanted to take us, me and my friend okay. Mari Flores. And at the same time, it was kind of the perfect place at the time. So that was a, that was a cool thing. Uh, we were there for two years, two seasons, and we learned a lot. Um, it, was a, it was a great experience. Yeah, interesting you bring up Flores because uh, looking yeah. looking into yourself in particular, you know, uh, American Football International has talked to you extensively as well as with Flores about just yeah. kind of your jump overseas when you went to the TSL. But, I mean, you know, Germany at least is where your experience is at. Uh, you you played in a German Bowl, correct, like that, at that time? Yeah. yeah. Uh, we um, uh, we played in the German Bowl in 2016 uh, when we lost against New York Alliance, and then again in 2017 when we beat New York Alliance. Nice. Can you describe that experience? I, I know it's it's their version of a Super Bowl in the yeah. U.S. like NFL wise. I mean, uh, how do you how do you how do you take that in? Any festivities for it as well? I mean, how how's that uh, event usually go? Um, honestly, it was a it was a really big thing. To be honest, uh, it was a lot bigger than I expected. Um, I like the fact that uh, I had 2016 as, as kind of a, as a build up to it. You know what I mean? Because that was my first season there, and we made a championship. So I I was really fortunate to experience to experience it twice. So that was pretty cool. Okay. And it's a big thing in Germany, especially for Swabies Hot. They set up a train with all of the fans, so we travel to the game by bus, and then. Uh, after the game is over, we go back to Swiss Hall by train with all of the fans, which is like really crazy. It's a big party, uh, and then nice. after the um, after that, there's also a big party in the in the like the town hall square okay. in the town, you know. And there's like a big party that's free beer. There's a lot of people, and it's like it's a really really big thing there. So it's it's a pretty cool experience. And the game itself, uh, we had a lot of. It wasn't it was a big stadium, but it was. Um, it was like an Olympic stadium with a track, so you didn't really feel the crowd that much. I mean, there was a, a big crowd. I think we had like somewhere between twenty and thirty thousand people. Oh, that's pretty, but, that's pretty solid. Yeah, but it was still like a the stadium is too big for that kind of that amount of people, you know. So okay. it was like a, I would say I don't know, but I would say it was like a forty or fifty, maybe even sixty k stadium. Uh, so it was yeah. like half empty, which it was like it was still a lot of people, but but yeah, I think. Uh, Last year, well, not last year, two years ago now, the one that they play in Frankfurt, I think that was probably the best one in terms of stadium and coverage and everything. But, yeah, it's a big game in Europe. Um, hopefully, uh, the EF, ELF Bowl will be at least just as big. Right, yeah. Well, they're definitely leading into it and in trying to make it something that's special across, of course, the yes. European continent, you know, rather than being specifically country-oriented or club-oriented, as we're talking about. Um, so from the, from Schreibisch Hall, I understand you went to Hildesheim, uh, which was yes. – that was the location you were before the Spring League. Uh, bit, of different, bit of difference there? Just want to change the scenery? You know? um, well, technically, I went back to Spain first. Um, okay. So I was in, in Swiss Hall for 2016 and 17, and then 2018 I went back home. Uh, it was just a long time uh, being away from home. Uh, I wanted to be close to the family. I wanted to play with my with my team again, kind of like soaking everything that I had learned during that time. Uh, so I went back for one year, 2018. Uh, we had a pretty good season with Osos. And then and then after that, I got a, the offer for to go to Hillesheim, and they were... They were building a like a really interesting, really ambitious project, and it was like a honestly, it was like a, one of those offers that you can't turn down. You know what I mean? It was like mm -hmm. a really oh, good sure. project. So we wanted to be a part of that, and it was a great experience. And uh, actually, like um, a lot of my teammates from that Hillsham team are now here with me in Leipzig, so that's a really cool thing. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, hey, you get a little bit trotting, and I can understand going back home. Yeah. You know, why, yeah. why not? Especially if you're in, in the area that you grew up and you got the team right there too. So yeah. it makes complete sense to me. My my main thing now, you know, because obviously you're, to me, when it comes to my understanding of homegrown, and I'm still learning as I go yes. when it comes to the European players and such, is, you know, it's it's not so bad to, I would say, country to country and such, get travel in Europe, but or at least get exposure out there. Now, when does the spring league come knocking for yourself? I mean, obviously you're making noise enough to where, you know, across the pond, you got a league that is inviting you over there or you're looking into it yourself. So where's, where does the, uh, where's that league come into play here in this uh, story of yours? Yeah. So um, honestly, the way it all started, I feel like it's kind of similar to the way that I ended up in Germany in the first place. So I was looking for a place to like uh, take like the next step as a player, 
and it was it was obvious that I had to leave Spain, go to a bigger football country. So that's mm-hmm. what we did at the time when we went to Germany. And then after that, I felt kind of the same thing. I felt like uh, that worked out. So when I went back from Germany, I was one of the best players in Spain. So I figured like, hey, if I go to the States, then when I can when I come back, I'll be one of the best players in Europe. But going to the States is not that easy, you know what I mean? So right, right, at that right. point, at that point in time, like I couldn't go to college because I was too old. I don't think I was even eligible. Um, you can just jump to an NFL team just like that. So the Spring League seemed to fit what I wanted to do. And I had a couple of teams that had uh, been there. Uh, one of them was Raheem Wilson. He was a cornerback okay. for Swabish Hall. And he went to the Spring League, I think, 2018. And then mm-hmm. he got signed to Calgary. And he had a really good season in the CFL in 2019 and another one was Clinton uh, Greenaway he was a teammate of mine in Spain and he also went to the Spring League so I just remember like seeing the reports on social media and stuff like that and I was following the league and I also uh, like oddly enough I remember watching the old like uh, FXFL games okay uh, yeah I remember they had a team in Brooklyn and Mm -hmm. that was cool to me so I watched a couple games and I think uh, I think the league the Spring League comes from that so when I when I was looking it up uh, it just I just thought it would be a good experience, so I sent my film and and everything, and they would they reached back to me uh, to tell me that I was selected to go to I think it was going to be in Las Vegas back then. And yes, that's right. Yeah, and then that's when I messaged Mario and I was like, "Hey, like I got in, like you should apply too. Let's see what happens, and maybe we can go together." So it, it all worked out pretty well. Nice. And it's funny you say it was originally in law. It was supposed to definitely be in Las Vegas. They changed yeah. to San Antonio, which funny enough, and I'm referencing a, a previous interview you've had as well. I believe it's from Euro players as well. The website. Um, I understand that San Antonio kind of has a connection, at least with your uh, football background, if, I, if I'm right. Um, I don't think so. I don't no. think so. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I could be a bit wrong never... there. Yeah, I have never been to like I, I had been to the stage before, but I had oh actually yeah I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I, I apologize true. if it's <laughs> no 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 you're actually right you're actually right I just didn't think about it. Yeah, when I started watching football for the first time when I was like like I told you when I was like 17 or something like that. So the first college football game that I ever watched uh, was an Alamo Bowl. There we go. I think it was between Baylor and Washington, but I don't remember very well. Um, and yeah, that game was played in the Alamo Dome. So th- I, that's like one of the very few college stadiums that I knew of because I don't really keep up with college football. So when I found out that it was going to be played in San Antonio and it was going to be in that stadium, I was like, oh, damn, that's like pretty cool, you know, because it's like a, like a cycle kind of thing, you know what I mean? Right. So I thought that was cool, but it's just, a, honestly, it's just like a like a small story, you know what I mean? It's not like a... <laughs> eh, no, it's fine. I... <laughs> but yeah, it's like a fun fact, you know what I mean? <laughs> Absolutely. Might have, yeah. might have reached there, but you know. <laughs> yeah, just... no, that's good. Little, you you got me there, but you're actually right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, nah, it's all good. Uh, yeah. I mean, honestly, though, for yourself, I mean, how was how's the American experience for you? So um, it was hard. It was difficult, not going to lie, especially um, with COVID going on. It was... Um, just uh, getting inside the country was absolutely crazy. We had to mm-hmm. do a lot of paperwork. We had to do a lot of calls. It was like really, really, really hard. Because I think we also went in like one of the worst times with COVID. I think it was like right at the second wave or something like that. Yeah, about that Maybe time. it wasn't that much responsible by, your, by us. You know what I mean? But, mm-hmm. you know, when you're chasing your dreams and you just do whatever you can. Um, but, yeah, it was really difficult to get there. Uh, everything was crazy. The Spring League, they changed the days a couple of times we had to change flights everything was super difficult but once we got there uh, you know once we got there it was just football so at the end of the day that's what we've been doing that's what we like to do and that's what I put my effort into that's what I prepared for so when the football started it was like it's um it sounds weird but I felt like everything got so much easier you know what I mean sure. um so that was that's a cool thing at the end of the day football is football wherever you play it is the same sport so it's just uh the speed is different um but I think that's the main thing that you notice that the speed is different, but everything else is just the same sport. Yeah. I, football's a universal language for, especially yeah. for players. So, you know, many, I mean, fundamentals carry over. It doesn't matter where you're yeah, from. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. And um, it's like you say, it's a language. Um, it's a way to communicate. It's just, uh, you feel like you understand everybody once you get there. You know what I mean? So that was cool. It was, obviously it was different from Europe in many things. Um, I would say, uh, everybody there is more competitive mm-hmm. for the most part. Uh, they are better prepared. They're better athletes. 
but yeah, like I said, at the end of the day, it's the same sport. So uh, it's just a take a jump on speed and intensity. But that's the, I think that's that's it. You were able to, and I know if you're anyone watching this, you'll see he's that Daniel is wearing that general shirt <laughs> right there. Uh, for those that are paying attention, the spring league is in its second televised season. You yeah. were part, you were part of the ina- inaugural here, um, and you were part of Bart Andrus's squad as well for the generals. Uh, you know, pretty championship winning as well, yeah. high caliber. You know, you were Brian Scott at QB, of course, defense. You were helping lock it down. Uh, anything in particular learned from that coaching staff that maybe you didn't get originally from your earlier days in European ball? Yeah, um, our coaching staff was really good. I think that was uh, probably one of the things that surprised me the most. Um, our DC was my single target, which was really cool. It was a really cool thing, you know, to be able to be coached by a Hall of Fame player, former NFL head coach. That was a really cool thing. And especially I could... Um, I would like to talk about Jeff Reinable. He was our defensive backs coach. I think he's a special teams coordinator for Hamilton. And he was probably the best coach I've ever had. He was just like really, really smart. Uh, the way he talked to the players, the way he handled himself, it was like, uh, it really like stood out to me. I I learned a lot from him. And I also appreciate it because um, I feel like he's one of the very few coaches in America or Canada too, that actually know about European football and they know how hard it is for European athletes to to make that jump and to get there and everything so he was really appreciative of that um that was a good thing and I think that helped me a lot because um I feel like he that I could relate to him a little bit more than maybe I could have you know what I mean with another coach yeah and also yeah also our DB or DB room was really good I feel like the group was pretty special um we had uh Christian McFarlane um Arnold Darplay, uh, Channing Stribling. Um, we had Amani Dennis, who's still playing right now. Mm-hmm. And we had a really good group. Um, and it was it was a cool thing to play with them. It was a good thing to, you know, go to work every day with them. And it was just, it was just a really good experience all around. Nice. You know, I'm, I'm glad to hear that because I there were some, I know that some had had mixed issues at the end of that original season. So, you know, I'm glad to hear your experience was definitely worthwhile and you got everything you needed out yeah. of it. So, and, you know, obviously circumstances were an issue with that first one, as you mentioned with COVID, completely yeah. get that. That was a factor, but football, you got to play, you got to learn a bit yeah, too. Yeah, exactly. And everything worked out. So it's awesome to hear. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, at the end of the day, you gotta you gotta take the positive parts. Uh, every experience has its hard parts. You, you know what I mean. There's always a tough thing about everything. Um, but at the end of the day, you keep the positive, and that's I think that's what matters. You know, nice. And we bring in Vince from Alt Football Scouting Report, as oh. I promised a little bit earlier. Vince, good to see you, buddy. <laughs> you know, how's it going? Another... How's it going? Yeah, hey, so good. We're doing good, you know. Got we just got Dan got most of Daniel's story up until well, right about now, where Daniel is currently at in Leipzig, getting ready for the 2021 ELF season, European League of Football. For those that don't know the acronym, uh, and honestly, this is where we've been really curious about a lot of things. Leipzig, in particular, um, we're understanding is kind of getting put together really quickly uh, yeah. in terms of in terms of many of the pieces. I'll, I'll let Vince join in because Vince, I understand you have some questions on the roster for Daniel. Yeah, uh, and you've definitely been in tune with what Leipzig's been putting together. Yeah, so yeah, I mean, Leipzig was definitely you know that that was um, when they had the two teams back out. They just kind of had to quickly like, all right, we gotta. They wanted to go with eight teams anyway, and I have to you know commend them for being able to get something to come up off the ground that quickly. Because I'll be honest, I mean, I had doubts. I think everybody had doubts just because the yeah. timeline is so is so short, you know. And that's yeah. really all it ever ever is. It's just. I've seen so many people try to pull something off that quickly and not do it properly. It's very oh, refreshing to see it done properly. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you know, um, you guys have got a lot of um, Invaders players, it seems, yes. right? And that, yes, yeah, yeah, talk, talk uh, yeah, sorry. So, um, I think uh, I'm not sure about this. I might be wrong, but I think when the when uh, Hillesheim team um, – was removed from the league. Uh, we kind of like uh, inherit uh, what they had going on just a little bit, not completely, but you know. So I know some contracts like carry over, or I don't, I don't know exactly how that worked, but I know that there was like a connection, like a clear connection. So 
uh, we basically are like still like hillis kind, but like relocated. That's what I think. That's my understanding. I'm not super excited how it works, but it's something like that. So yeah, I was I played in hillis in 2019, um, the last DFL season before the ELF started, and so I had a lot of connections with uh, you know a lot of my teammates uh, from there. Uh, we talked about we talked often. Um, that's how that's how the opportunity to come to Leipzig um, got to me. You know. Okay. Yeah, because you're there with like you got who's who's I'm trying to remember at least who was on the invaders that went with you. I know uh, Jacob Templar, uh, the punter. He's also he's like a really well known YouTuber in a sense as well. Yeah, I understand. yeah. He's a he's uh, a star here in Germany. Yeah, he's a good dude. I've talked to him a yeah, little bit. For sure. Dude, for sure. Yeah. Um and oh man, I'm trying to look. Um, Rodion. Ro- yes. How's that pronounced? Uh, That's not right. We just call him Dion. I don't know exactly how you pronounce, but I know he doesn't like it, so it's just Dion. Dion. Okay, Dion. Dion. I got you. He's from yeah. the Netherlands. He played. Yes. He played at Reedley College here in the states. He played at New Mexico State as well, yes. and then was on the Invaders with you and was supposed to be on the uh, the German, the German Knights too. Um, yes. There's there's a good amount of people that were German Knights signees that that yeah. came over as well, from what I understand. Yeah. Um, and who else? You like uh, Lance Liotta was another one of them. He's from New Zealand. He uh, played a little bit in the states. Is uh, yeah. I'm not gonna get like too deep into the story because I don't know it all and I don't want to tell it wrong. Um, but I know that he played briefly in the states and that his you know ELF opportunity is like was kind of like his first real big opportunity that he he apparently like lost his uh, opportunity playing in the, at college in the states. And like this is kind of his, you know, transition be- yeah. to come back to playing. You know, yeah, right? we're all very excited to see Lance playing again. Yeah, but yeah. Um, I would say from my original 2019 GFL team, uh, so it's Jacob Dion, as you said, uh, Anthony Dable, mm, yeah, and uh, Jalil Awini. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's it. I, f- I feel really bad if I'm leaving somebody, but I, I think that's it. <laughs> and then there are some, oh, there are some other guys. Uh, there are some other players uh, that were going to play there either in 2020 in the GFL mm-hmm. season or in 2021 for the Knights. Uh, I think um, Kyle Kitsens, for example, he's mm-hmm. one of them. He was going to play Kyle both Kitchens, seasons. Man. Uh, Ooh, that man yeah. is a problem. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm, when I when I was digging into all the the FCF players, Kyle Kitchens is one of the yeah. people that really jumped up to the top of my list, like yeah. early on. Because if you look at his college numbers, he was putting up like, oh man, I don't remember offhand. It's not in front of me, is it? He was putting up like you know thirteen sacks, fifteen yeah. sacks, like twenty something tackles for loss. And then when he went over to the GFL, he led the league in sacks. Yeah, he led the league in sacks. He had a really good season. Uh, it's just uh, uh, his team didn't do that well, so I don't think he had the atten- He got the attention that he would have gotten if he played for a team with a winning record. You know what I mean, or a playoffs team. Mm-hmm. But yeah, he's definitely a, a great, great guy to have on our team. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's like, what was one thing that was really impressive from his game in FCF is like. FCF wasn't necessarily defensive lineman friendly. It's, you know, you only have three yeah, linemen rushing with nothing but young, fast, mobile quarterbacks. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's just kind of the – that's kind of how arena football is in, in general to begin with. Yeah. But oh, yeah. because the, their rules had tight ends replacing linemen and D linemen would have to drop back into coverage, Kyle Kitchens was like one of the few D linemen that was – really keeping up with these tight ends downfield. Yeah, and that's crazy. Man upping them from from down on the line. Like, he's yeah. not even dropped back off. Like, he has to make that read. Is he going out for a router? Is he blocking? And yeah. then run with dude and was, like, sticking guys downfield consistently. He's very – like, he's a very, very talented athlete. I think he's been severely slept on for sure, and I think he's going to be a force in this league for sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you, guys got, you guys got some talents for absolutely. Sure. Uh, <laughs> my my thing with the my thing with the ELF and at least with Leipzig here for yourself. Yeah. How was the feel of this league for you as a player? You know, I, I know you've been. I mean, you've been to the top league and at least to many's eyes, the top league being the GLF. You yeah. know, and that's one that keeps getting compared as well. The cream of the crop in that part of the world is the GLF. So I mean. Not saying to compare directly to them, but like, how are you? What is the vibe, at least the atmosphere, and at least the 
kind of the aesthetic for you and in terms of how it's how you're feeling it's being managed right now or at least the team you're on and who you've interacted with so far um honestly uh i think it's just uh, it's just crazy and i think it's humbling that the fact that we were able to put this together in like i don't know two months month and a half something like that uh i feel like if i if I told anybody to put together a team in two months, I don't think they would come with a team like half as good as the one we have. So honestly, I think that's a great thing that speaks volumes to everybody on the building. You know what I mean? And it's not that many people in the building. So the guys that we got, they're doing a great job. And I think that's, I think that's really cool. And I think that speaks really highly of them. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, like the initial thoughts, I think by everybody, maybe not other guys, but at least for me and the people close to me, when we start hearing about this in like, I think the first time I heard about this was around September of last year, like right before I was going to the Spring League. And, you know, everybody was skeptical. Uh, yep. You know, startup leagues don't have greater reputation. I understand that. Um, I think it comes with the business. You know what I mean? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, it's probably the same in every other business, not just football. You know what I mean? But in football, I know they don't have the best reputation. I understand that. I think it's normal. I was the first one that was like really skeptical at the beginning. You know, to be able to pull that off so quickly, to do it during these times with uh, with the pandemic and everything, like, honestly, it sounded insane. So when I first heard about it, I was like, I don't know, I didn't even take it seriously. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, I think that was everybody's first thoughts. Cause that's yeah, 100%. My, 100%. First thought was, you're a European league, but you have six German teams? Like, yeah. you're just, with the GFL, how's that going? You know what I mean? I yeah. was very skeptical too, but, you know, yeah. I feel very different now, you know? Of course. And um, the, the GFL has so, has been such a strong league for so long. Um, you know, everybody w tries to compare it with uh, the league in Finland or Austria or any other league in Europe. But the truth is that I don't think any other league has come close to that. So, you know, it's like a really strong and solid league with a big foundation. So I didn't think it would be a competition, you know what I mean? But at the same time, I know there's a lot of people in, the, in Germany and, and probably in Europe in general, but there's a lot of people that were not very happy with things in the GFL, the way they handle things, or I don't know exactly because I'm just a player, you know what I mean? But you hear mm -hmm. some stuff and you know that not everybody in Germany was happy about it, you know what I mean? So I feel like uh, once the, the last season wasn't played, uh, I know some teams wanted to play really bad. I know some teams didn't want to play at all. But I feel like uh, it, it all helped to make this tension a little stronger. I don't know if that makes sense in English. And that yeah, kind of so. like gave the ELF a, like a window of opportunity to to come in this year and, you know, and get a lot of people in to jump to the league. You know what I mean? And I remember at the beginning, um, I, I didn't even think about it. I didn't even consider it. Uh, and I was I was uh, laser focused on going back to the GFL, but I started seeing all the players. You know what I mean? All the players that were signing, and it's like they were signing all of the best players. In, not all of them, but like most of the best players in Europe, most of the big names. And at the end of the day, I don't think we as players, I don't think we really care what we are playing. You know what I mean? I think we only care who we are playing against and who are we playing with. Mm -hmm. So if all the best players in Europe are coming to this league, or most of them, you know what I mean? Because there's still a lot of really talented players in the GFL. But if most of the big names and most of the good athletes in Europe and the guys you want to compete with um, are, are going to this league. So at the end of the day, you want to go there and you want to compete with them because that's what I think matters to all of us. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. So when I started seeing that, I was like, oh, it might actually be the move to come here. I don't know. But then it's, it was also a really strange uh, year. I had like weird situations happen with um, two different teams. So it was it was just really strange year you know but i'm happy that it worked out the way it did uh happy that i'm here i think we have a great group of people so i think it will be a really exciting year here to be honest yeah man it, it definitely I wanna get you with two two more things on the king's roster sure. before we start digging into any any For other sure. teams so first i want to talk about it the, there's three people coming over from asia if, that, if that's correct right is Sheeta wong still on the roster is he still yes he's still on the roster is he there yet or no um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, so you have you have three three people coming over with Michael Birdsong. I mean, okay, yeah, Michael. I didn't know you were counting Michael. Yeah, yeah I, was I, was about, I was talking about Michael. Yeah, yeah. I was confused about that. Like three, I don't know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, yeah, we got Michael for sure. And Michael Birdsong has been, you know, the reason I say that is because he's been in the X League for <laughs> yeah. three seasons running now. Seasons. Yeah, and uh, yeah, he's been one of the best players there, not the best one. Yeah, for sure, and you know, um. 
we already kind of touched on this in the past, so I won't I won't dig too deep on that. But then the fact that now Yoshihito Omi is is on site as yes. well. Your fellow Spring League brethren. I mean, yes. Put them out of you guys there now. Yes, that's how it happened, honestly. Uh, the first time I talked to Coach, um, uh, one of the first things I asked him was, how's the roster looking, how many guys we got? And basically, he told me that we he barely got anybody yet. You know what I mean? There were still a lot of spots. So I asked him, like, hey, can I try to bring some guys? Can I try to, like, get you in touch with some of my friends that, you know, I know that can play? He was like, yeah, of course. And obviously, the first thing I thought was about Mario. Because uh, we always went together to every team, and I was pretty sad that we couldn't do it this year. But he had already signed with Barcelona. He's in the team in the same league, so it was like obviously it was too late for that. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, the, the the next person that came to mind was Omi because we were together at the spring league. We were pretty good friends, and I I just saw the way he worked, and I saw the way he the way he played. I think he's, honestly, I think he's one of the best players in the world. And I told Coach like, hey, like. This is my friend. This is his film. Uh, I think I don't know how it's gonna work with like rules or nationalities or stuff like that. But if there's a chance that we get him on the team, uh, we should try because he's he's a really good player. And and that's how yeah he I got I got him in those. Coach really liked it. Uh, coach told um, Michael about him. He was like, hey, I'm in touch with this kid. He's from Japan. What do you think? And Michael was like, oh, I know him very well. He's he's the man. You know what I mean? We need yeah, to, we yeah. need with him. So it worked out really well, and I'm I'm excited to see both of them. I, I'm especially excited to watch Homie play in Europe. You know, I think it's going to be a really <laughs> – honestly, I think it's one of the most interesting things in the league right now, to be honest with you. 100%. You know, I think um, the success of the Kings will kind of define the way that the ELF will expand in the future, right? Because Leipzig, from what I understand, didn't have a very strong football culture. Um, you know, Correct. prior to this team, and that you know, the Leipzig Lions, who correct me if I'm wrong, you guys have some type of some some working arrangement or something with them, correct? Yes, there's like, a there's a relationship for sure. Okay, yeah, that's see, like that's kind of what I I feel like it was important to talk about because like there was all the drama with stealing players or whatever yes. from the beginning of the season, and that the way that they've kind of pivoted, right, was that when they were trying to start up with the Centurions in Cologne, everyone was worried they're going to they're gonna take all these these crocodiles, whatever the, you know, the yeah. issue was. They have able been able to get a whole roster put together, and the crocodiles are as strong as ever. Yeah, they're but probably that game last they weekend, been they, Yeah. So it's like – you know, the success of, of honestly, the Centurions and the Kings are really going to define the uh, how the ELF will expand in the future. Just of, hey, you know, we were able to get, you know, a good class of imports and then build locally with our local clubs. Like they did a whole, the, the whole combine you guys held was with, yeah. like I, from, I think I read that uh, like the GM or, you know, the board of directors or whatever, for the Leipzig Lions was there on site watching a bunch of his guys try out for the team. Yes. And like that's really what it's about. It's like being able to be like, hey, you know, we're going to come into this country that maybe doesn't have a super strong team, but they have a, a, a solid system and we yeah. can get all the best players from their team, support it with a good class of imports and make a competitive team out of it and put some good coaching there as well, you know. And um, I think I think it's a great blueprint they have because I think that's kind of what they did. That's what they did with uh, the Dragons in Barcelona as well. Uh, just a bunch of local combines. I think it's a little different. Uh, honestly, I feel like we are kind of like uh, opposite teams in terms of strategy. And I think <laughs> it's going to be really interesting to see how each of us does. I think Barcelona is doing a great job. And I think they're going to be one of the, in my opinion, um, one of the most competitive teams just because, you know, they're probably working harder than everybody else. So, yeah. That's a really cool thing, you know. But yeah, uh, I think uh, I think it's probably difficult uh, for some teams in the league, like for example, Cologne, as you said, um, Berlin, um, you know, all the, uh, some of these other teams because they have like really strong competition for players, you know. And I think uh, I think one of the keys to the success of this league is going to be to be able to be as strong as possible and still like not compete with other teams or the leagues for players, you know what I mean? Because uh, that's why I think, for example, Barcelona is such a good team because uh, the way the schedule works, uh, the Spanish season is over, everybody in Spain is on vacation for summer break, whatever. 
So it works really well for them in a way that they can get pretty much every good Spanish player in the country that probably didn't really have much to do in summer other than play somewhere in Europe, you know what I mean? But they can play home in an sure. even better league, so it's perfect. They can get every good player in the country. Uh, they don't have to fight with any teams. They don't have to fight with federation. So I think it works really, really well for them. So I think that's probably why they're going to be, I think, uh, if everything sticks around, I think they will probably be one of the strongest teams in like, I don't know, 10, 20 years, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I feel like um, for the German teams, it's probably a little harder. Uh, but at the same time, um, they have somewhere to recruit from. So it's kind of, you know, it's kind of like it goes both ways. Like, we have guys to recruit from, but I have teams to compete with. Yeah. And we are, we are in a place where we don't have much competition, but we didn't have we didn't have a big pool of local talent. You know what I mean? And honestly, I was surprised. Right now, I'm surprised with the way I'm they... I was going to ask next if you was like yeah. any specific homegrown talent guys that have really been sticking out to you at practice and whatnot. Yeah, like the first, you know, the first day, um, honestly, um, I thought we were lacking a little bit. But now they're, that they have been working with us, uh, they're just, you know, they're just one more player or they're just extra players on the team and they're like some of them are starting some of them are doing great things they're all working really hard they're and it, it doesn't really with some of the top local guys it don't, you don't really feel that big of a difference with the imports you know what i mean and i think it's cool um i think it's cool especially for a team with such a small pool of talent to recruit from you yeah. know what i mean so i think um at the beginning maybe we were like a little worried about that but now I think we're getting some really good guys locally that really want to be a part of this and really want to work hard. So, I, you know, I find I find the fascination with you talking about the competition for, say, the local these local talent. You know, we're we're actually right now in America we're discussing about yeah. this for the future of our yeah. uh, alternative leagues. I mean, you know, because I, I mean I don't know if you heard. The United States Football League is coming back to town for, via the Spring League's own ownership, which you were, have been at least associated, you know, yes. with at least the league wise. And then you got the XFL, the CFL, they're trying to work their thing. So, you know, even our end, we're going to be dealing with a whole talent draw at some point in the near future yeah. that we have to debate with. And I imagine with the ALF and they're considering expanding in the next few years, that just continues to keep on uh, being maybe not a problem, but something that you have to, you know, kind of step around or you know yeah. find a way to fit the pieces in correctly to keep the competitiveness at least up or it just gets more competitive because it's all the best players if you yeah. make it work out right yeah i think um in europe i think it just i think it will just make everybody better to be honest i think the only country that has a problem with it is germany just because they had such a strong league you know and they had like a lot of strong teams uh but all the other countries like if they put a team in the uk for example mm -hmm. uh you know, they have really good players, but they don't have a strong league. So if they put a ELF team in, U in the UK, that's going to benefit everybody there. And mm -hmm. I think all the football players over there are going to get so much better and they're going to get more exposure, better coaching, better competition, everything. You know what I mean? Yes. And it's right. kind of the same with like France, for example. They have amazing players, but their league is not that strong. So it's kind of the same thing. If they put a team in France, it's going to be one of the strongest teams in the league if everything works out well for them. So I think in, in Europe, that's not going to be a problem. It's just going to make everybody better and it's going to make the league more interesting and it's going to make the competition higher. Uh, in America it may be different but at the same time I feel like there are so many athletes coming out every year out of college and uh, I don't know how many but it's probably like thousands every year and you know like a lot of them they stick around for like two, three, four, five years uh, still trying to make it you know what I mean and all of them are like really good players that keep getting better after they graduate from college you know and a lot of these guys, they don't have the opportunity to put on film after mm -hmm. college. But I'm sure that, like, a guy that graduated three years ago and has been working for three years and make it to the NFL is probably a lot better now than he was when he graduated college. So if you yeah. give all of those guys a platform, you give all of them a team, um, honestly, I think it can only be beneficial. And there can be so many stories, like, so many, like, I don't know, Kurt Warners or guys like that that can come out of nowhere and end up being pretty good, you know? DJ Walker, you know? Yeah, right. exactly. making right now that have already, you know, so many guys have cracked NFL rosters through exactly. other leagues already. Um, and we every time a new league comes up, there's always new players that we've never heard of suddenly showing out. I mean, yeah. I how many people legitimately knew who Brian Scott was before last fall? 
Because yeah, I'll tell I you mean, right I'm now, saying. he's one of How the many? best quarterbacks we've seen come up out of any league. You know what I mean? So yeah. there's always there's always going to be talent for for those leagues. 100%. And then to uh, European sense, it's like even if say the Cologne Centurions just didn't you know wasn't able to put together strong enough of a team, which we're not going to be able to tell until you know they actually yeah. play. They had one scrimmage against the Galaxy. They played two quarters only. I think the final score was like 20 to 7 uh, in favor of the Galaxy. So, in my eyes, the Galaxy are kind of like the measuring point to being sure. like that top tier of teams because that Galaxy team is basically the entire 2019 2020 Frankfurt yeah. squad. Even that better, was probably. Contending at the top level you know what i mean these guys have been there and they've they've been at that point you know they they didn't win the german bowl but they were at that level so like that's a team that will contend with anybody and i've said that in the past and i think as more as competitive as each team is compared to the galaxy if the whole league can meet that kind of level that then it kind of shows like this is that top competitive league you know what i mean and um I mean, look, we, we were we were there was concerns about Berlin Thunder. They did a scrimmage against the Sea Devils, who were projected to be one of the best teams. And the final score of that scrimmage was fourteen to thirteen. Yeah, it was pretty close. And uh, I saw, I mean, I saw practice or footage from that scrimmage of Calvin Stitt dropping a dime to Star yeah. Spontavious Jones, like that, like some good football, man. You know. <laughs> Sure. That, that's what yeah. we're all hoping for. Um, you know? Yeah, that's what yeah, yeah, we all want. You know, we kind of saw if anybody was, you know, people that everyone that's watching this should be also be watching the GFL games every su- Saturday and Sunday. That's besides the point. So if you missed it, you know, the Frankfurt Universe and the Stuttgart Scorpions have definitely suffered from yeah. uh, the split that happened within their club right because it was kind of like especially because the scorpions were supposed to be in this league and then they had their whole whole internal split that just led to them staying and then the surge becoming its own team Mm -hmm. so like that was kind of expected you know you see how strong the centurions or uh the crocodiles are the rebels are playing the new york new yorker lions this weekend that's a tough task to begin with in the first place but i i you know did some digging into the the berlin roster and like they pulled a lot of guys from lower level clubs. They've only took yeah. like 10 guys, I think, that their last team was the Rebels. And yeah. then like nine guys whose last team was the Adler. Mind you, there are so many clubs in Ber- in Berlin. Like, you know, the Rebels play in the GFL. I think the Adler play in the GFL yeah, so too. Two, and um, Potsdam is right there. Potsdam is uh, like, I don't know, like 20, 30 minutes away from Berlin. And they are also like... a really solid GFL one Yeah, team. yeah. So, like, they were able to recruit from some of those teams without taking a large chunk of players. Yeah. Yeah. So, I don't think those teams will feel the effect nearly as much. And I think um, the local talent they've been able to pull up, you know, some of the guys were, you know, playing on, like, the Berlin Knights or the Berlin Cobras yeah. or whatever. I don't even – couldn't even tell you all the different teams that there were. But, like, they have New Yorker Lion experience. They have Rebels experience. You know, like, there's they, – they were able to put together, like, a team of serious players without having to, like, pull a whole club yeah. up and over, you know? Um, so, I think – and, you know, them being so competitive against the Sea Devils just, I think, shows how much stronger of a team they will actually be in this league as well. Yeah, it's going to be your first game, so we'll find out pretty soon. Yeah, really. <laughs> Very, soon. <laughs> Very soon. I mean, it's it's right around the corner as of this broadcast. Yeah, it's this week. You know, yeah, no kidding. <laughs> we're, yeah, crazy. we're coming right up one. Um, yeah. you know, I think the Panthers, I don't know what their, their situation is now because they just had their American import and their American import running back and quarterback both. Yeah. I heard about that. They managed to get a running back. Oh, man, I can't remember his name off the top of my head. But he was, like, really, really good special teams player in college, very athletic, and was, like, on the Orlando Apollos for a pre- for the preseason, I think. And I want to say he may have been signed to play in Germany for 2020. I don't know if that's true. 
Um, but yeah, they did. They did manage to get an, a new running back in. I don't know what their quarterback situation is going to be, but if they roll with Bartek Diziek, I said his last name right, the Polish born QB, they will be in good hands because that dude yeah. is a beast. Yeah, and, he played really well last last season. I think uh, before that, I think he played with Seward too, and he was really successful. So mm-hmm. I think he's a good athlete, and they have a really solid team that know each other for a long time. So they'll probably be really good for them yeah yeah for sure and you know they they still have uh Darius Robinson and William Lloyd on defense those two are those two are like I mean Darius Robinson's been one of the top players in in Europe for the past couple of years now I mean, he's got a CEFL or CEFL MVP championship game MVP under his belt and that, that definitely says a lot um and uh yeah I just want to at least ask you like what are you looking for? Are you looking forward to having to go head up on Mario uh, when you, you and the dragon? Oh, man. Fight? <laughs> That'll be funny. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I mean, the good thing about it is that if we have to play Tori, it will be for the championship. So I feel like if uh, if it has to happen, that's probably the best way for it to happen. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, I'm excited to play. Honestly, I'm excited to just see the league, see how it is. Uh, it's a new thing. I feel like everybody feels really refreshed about it. Uh, so it's going to be fun. Everybody's excited. You know, uh, it's exciting to play with NFL rules. It's just like everything is different. At the end of the day, it's similar, but it's di- everything is different. So right. I think that's why everybody's so excited. In like personal, um, I'm excited to play against Hamburg just because, you know, they're probably one of the most, like one of the strongest teams. Uh, they got two Spanish receivers, which is a cool thing. You know what I mean? For me, I mm-hmm. think it would be fun to just play against them. Uh, so that's probably ah, and also the quarterback is a really good friend of mine, Jadren Clark. So I think that's probably the game that I feel the most excited about. But I also feel really excited about playing in Poland because uh, I was going to play this season in Poland, but it couldn't happen. So I think it's cool that I get to at least play one game there, and especially against their best team. You know, right. so they have a beautiful stadium. Uh, I have a couple of friends in that team too. So you know, it's going to be fun. it's going to be a fun season everywhere we go. But yeah, those are definitely two of the games that I'm really excited about. Well, Vince had to kind of run real quick, but we definitely had to get him in, talk rosters. Obviously, Daniel had plenty to give Vince and I on at least some of the roster breakdowns, as well as just more in-depth with the talent in the European League of Football, which, you know, for all intents and purposes, I would say this conversation with you between you, me, and Vince, and or just you and I, definitely helps a little more of the confidence in what I'm expecting with this league. A lot of Americans are curious about this, Dan- Daniel. Yeah. That's That's something that's come up is that, you know, but we love football in this country, but you know, you see the NFL Europe and old world league of football logos and you see yeah. all the talent that's going over there. You know, we're curious and that definitely helps out a lot, you know, especially for yourself being on a team that's been put together so quickly and how much yeah. you've talked, how they've done a great, at least a decent job getting that all in order. You know, it, it's awesome. Uh, before I let you go, cause it, it is late here as we're recording, but yeah, you know, no I, worries, I, I appreciate all that you've sure. discussed. Uh, you you were talking before Vince joined with me, uh, just kind of how every step you take a new step it seems every place you go. So with the ALF, you know what is the step you're looking to take here with this new founded league and just where you're trying to go with your football career? Uh, so personally, I feel like uh, you know I feel like I started like I started like really at the bottom 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 of football, mm-hmm. uh, and you know it's been it's been a really big climb. Uh, you know, my first like few practices were in a park in the middle of, you know, outside Madrid. So it was like, okay. you know, to go from there to like, to play in like a big stadium in the States or to be able to make a living playing football, is kind of still kind of crazy to me. So I'm always appreciative of that. But at the same time, I feel like uh, during this time, I've been so focused on just uh, getting to the next level. Uh, you know, at, at each level that I was, like, uh, I was always looking forward to the next one. And I never right. really had a chance to, like, establish myself before, you know what I mean? Before oh, yeah. I made the exam. I never really waited until I was, like, you know, the best player in Madrid to go to National League or the best player in Spain to go to Europe or one of the best players in Europe to go to GFL or one of the best players in GFL to go to Spain. I, I never waited for that because I never felt like I had enough time, you know what I mean? Okay. And I, I think it has led me to a point where I'm, where, uh, where I'm a, I think I'm a really good football player, and I think I can be one of the best European players. And my only true goal this season is to 
to really prove that outside of what I think or what I have, you know what I mean, what I have in my mind. So I just want to like get established in Europe as a, you know, as a good player in this league, and that's what I'm looking forward to. I love hearing it. We're gonna be rooting for you here, of course, over at Gridiron <laughs> Gallery, and. Again, thank you so much for everything you've sure. contributed today. You know, there's a lot of people that are curious about this that you know they yeah, want they want to hear players, they want different angles. So you're yeah. you're helping with that conversation a lot. Yeah. So the, the the one thing that I would like to say to everybody looking from the outside in is just to be positive, you know, be a little optimistic. I know it's hard. I know like every time we we see something new, like a fresh reaction is to be like to like reject it in some way, you know what I mean? Yeah, I get what you And mean. I understand that because it's the same for me. I did the exact same thing when I first heard about this, and I'm not saying the league is going to be perfect. It probably won't. Just like any other league, it's not perfect. When I was in the spring league, you know, it was a great experience, but it was far from perfect. I feel sure. like everywhere is, is the same way, you know what I mean? So instead of, like, looking for those things or instead of, like, rooting for it to fail, just, like, be optimistic about it, try to enjoy it, and... At the end of the day, it'll be like so much more fun and so much more rewarding if we if we do things that way. You know what I mean? I completely understand, and generally, that's how I'm feeling right now. You know, I'm I'm hoping yeah. the best. You know, that's yeah. The thing. And you know, maybe it doesn't work out, and even if it does, it's fine. Like at least we try to put something together that everybody loves. And if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. There's nothing you can do about it. But yeah, I think it's pretty important to be optimistic about it and to you know just join the excitement. Yeah, I'm hey we're definitely going to be joining in at least best we can, you know, still going to figure yeah. out my end on, t- on watching, but I'll get that all sorted out. I know there's some streaming options that on the, year, yeah. on the uh, ELF website that will be, I'll be checking out and maybe putting a little money towards, you know, maybe watch yeah. the life's a king, get that little package. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Hey, <laughs> honestly, I think it will be one of the most exciting things to watch. I don't know how good it will be, but it will definitely be a really exciting thing to watch. And I feel like every week is going to be interesting to see what the Kings do. No kidding. Your first game is June twentieth. You're gonna be yes, you're gonna be uh, hosting. It looks like the Berlin Thunder. Oh uh, no, I think we're playing in Berlin. Are you? Playing? Oh, yes. I see. Okay, this might be the schedules might be flipping how they read yeah, it off. Flipped. Yeah, I think that's a European thing. We we have it the other way around in the states. Darn Americanization. Yeah, no, everything, my... everything is everything is sweet up. You know, I'm like learning yeah. so much every one of these podcasts. <laughs> yeah. Like, Oh, this is, this is going on, you know? So yes, you'll be going to Berlin then, yeah. <laughs> which I surprisingly have been there in my time. Love the city, nice. by the way. Nice. Uh, definitely want to go back some point before it, you know, I, uh, you know, bite the dust, but you know, it's a great spot to start things off. So June 20th, yeah. you guys will be hitting the field. I'm looking forward yes. to that. Yes. Uh, where... uh, sorry, go on. Oh no, I didn't mean you go right ahead. I interrupted you. <laughs> no, I was just um, I was just gonna say that it's I think it's a good start. You know, I think it's a good start for us. Berlin is the closest team. It's you'll probably be one of our rival teams, so I think it's a good start. Awesome. Where can we find you on social, by the way? Yeah, so you can find me on Instagram mostly. Uh, my IG handle is I got the groove. It's a little weird, but I liked it and I never wanted to change it, so that's where I'm at. If not, you can just type Daniel DF and I'll probably show up. And if you go to Twitter, I think my Twitter is Daniel DF211. Okay. This is a new account, so it was hard. I had to put a bunch of numbers on it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you can find me there. Um, you can keep up with you know my highlights, my team's uh, record, whatever we're doing. Um, and just you know keep up with the league, the guys that were here. Uh, funny enough, uh, we have, uh, I think, three YouTubers on our team. So... I think it's pretty easy to keep up with what we're doing, and I think it'll be cool for the fans because so they'll be able to keep like a closer eye on us. Nice, plenty of content gonna be coming out of out of Leipzig yeah, sure. then for from sure. that roster. I'll have to yeah. keep an eye. You know, yeah. give me give me a heads up and others, and we'll we'll be sure. And I'll see if we can get some followers over on your account as well and get nice. that new Twitter Maybe. account boosted. So, you know, uh, da- Daniel, thank you very much. Can't th- can't get enough. You know, fans will be rooting for you in in the Amer in the U.S. I definitely will be. Um, Thank you. Appreciate you know, it. hey, I still haven't decided teams, so maybe Leipzig and Kings. That's gonna be my choice. <laughs> but nice. you no, know, otherwise, we wish you the best. Have a great one, man. Thank you. You too. Uh, also, thanks for the covering now uh, international football. I think it's cool for everyone in Europe to get a little more exposure, and for everybody that's playing outside, you know, the big leagues to, you know, get a little bit of exposure. I think it's pretty cool. Much appreciated. <laughs> thank you for the, thank you for the little nod. The Great Iron Gallery Podcast. New episodes every Friday on your favorite podcast platforms, YouTube, and premiering first as always at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Pacific, only on unhingedsn.com.